Hey friends, welcome back. Hope you all are doing well. So today we are going to learn about a very important and lifeline of the surgeons is the suturing techniques. So without the suturing, uh, the stitches, the surgeon is nothing. So we have just we are going to just I am going to show you the here the practical aspect how the knots are tied, how the stitches are taken. Uh, first, before that, we will just quickly grow um, go to uh, to uh, through the the very important theoretical aspect, and then we will quickly go towards the our practical aspect. Just quickly go through the briefly about what are the suture material we have to do, uh, to do the stitches. So what are, just talk about just quickly talk about what are the kind of uh, suturing knots we have, what are the kind of uh, sutures we take, what are what are the suture materials we have. So just talk about what are the types of sutures. So the type of sutures we usually uh, divide classified into two main parts that is the non-absorbable and the absorbable spin. The non -absorbable, in the non-absorbable we have uh, silk, we have nylon, we mostly use proline and sometimes stainless steel wire in case of cardiac surgeries. Then uh, in the tensile, uh, in the absorbable sutures we have uh, we have classified this uh, uh, this table in this according to the loss of tensile strength. The loss of tensile strength we have vital rapidity uh, we, in the cat guard we usually don't use uh, nowadays. We have vicryl, we have PDS. So these are the uh, absorbable sutures we have. And you can also go to, uh, through this, uh, the very beautiful table we have here. Uh, according to uh, this table divides all of the sutures which are commonly used according to their types, the raw material, and tensile strength, loss of tensile strength, and absorption rate. They are totally different things. Do remember this, guys. And then we yeah, just go through this table and we are just quickly moving forward towards the what are the kind of needles uh, we have usually uh, in the earlier uh, previous past we used to have a straight needle and this straight needle we have a uh, eye and that in that eye we used to put the sutures but nowadays we have only the manufactured uh, pre-manufactured needle along the curved needle and which in which there is already a uh, uh, sutures are already placed here and these are already packed uh, remove uh, disposable needles we have and this accordingly we used uh, the cross section the cross sections we have is uh, we have the round body we have cutting we have reverse cutting so these are only three types of cross sections which we usually have in our needles and accordingly we use uh, round body mostly used in the gut surgeries and uh, the cutting and the reverse cutting which are mostly used for the tough structures like sheath back of the skin so and so on so and let's quickly go towards towards our main part of our surgeries, the stitches and the knots. In the stitch, uh, these are the, uh, in the suture techniques we just learned about. So the next thing we have is the kind of knots. I will just quickly show you, don't worry, in just few minutes, and the stitches we have. Knots we usually mostly commonly use as of, of four types. This is the granny's knot. This is the reef knot. What a difference I will just show you in the, when we talk about the practical aspect. This is triple knot and this is the surgeon's knot. In the stitches, we have we have totally divided grossly into two main parts. That is the interrupted stitches, interrupted sutures. And continuous sutures. In the interrupted there is one very golden rule I have taken from the Bailey. In the, this is the interrupted one and this is the continuous one. In the interrupted sutures, the thickness or the length X of the skin, when we, when we usually stitch the skin, it should be the distance between these two parts should be X and X according to the skin thickness. And only that, uh, only that, that difference, that two X difference, will we have to take another stitch at that same distance from that previously taken one. So this is the rule of uh, X we usually take while putting the interrupted simple sutures. And in the continuous sutures we have to just continue stitches and then I will just show you in a few minutes about the how these stitches are placed. So then I'll just uh, talk about the practical aspect. Just go to our just go to our dummy how we used to take the knots. So friends now we are going to talk about the very two important knots in our surgery is the reef knot and the granny's knot. The reef knot, or the other name is a square knot. We used to, uh, we used, uh, we give uh, two throws with two different methods. The first method is the, end, is the middle finger method, in which we make a loop around the middle finger and we try to grab it and 
tighten it. In the another method, with the index finger method, we try to make a loop around the index finger and then try to grab, grab it and tighten it. So this is how a reef knot or the square knot looks like. So this is the main difference between the granny's knot and the I will just show you how the granny's knot looks like actually. Actually this is this is the actual square knot. So let me tell you the method of how we tie the square knot. So to tie a square knot the first method is I told you about the middle finger method in which we try to um, we first try to make, uh, we try and grab the uh, shorter end in our dominant hand the longer end in the non dominant hand between your thumb and the index finger then we try to make a loop around the little finger we try to make but not fully make the loop and we also try to make a loop of the with the longer end around the middle finger so this is how after we try to make the loop two uh, two loops with the, with the middle finger and the ring finger then i will actually make the loop and uh, around the uh, one so first stage i used to give around the middle finger and i will grab the shorter end and just tighten it this is how our first throw will be made in a reef knot just don't try to cross your uh, hands in the horizontal direction this will obscure the field try to tighten it in the vertical direction this is very very important and then in the next method of index finger i will make the loop try to make a loop around the index finger the first loop the shorter end will in, will be in the uh, in the index finger and the longer end i will also try to make it in the uh, the inner loop in the index finger and then with the index finger i will make a proper loop and try to grab it between your index and the middle finger and then tighten it this is how our reef knot or square knot looks like try to practice it and you will learn it surely and then the another uh, knot is the just let's, let's try one more time the middle finger loop tighten it index finger loop tighten it easier so this is a reef knot in granny's knot the first method is same in which we we put uh, we put the first row same as our previous one this is our first row the no, our shorter end is in the dominant hand longer end is in the non dominant hand if we make same loop uh, with the same method with the index finger method then it may it will same it will makes the granny's knot and this is how our granny's knot looks like and i will show you how uh, how it looks like actually actually this granny's knot looks like this this is how our granny's knot looks like and we why we prefer granny's knot while we tie uh, any kind of bleeder because it's very easier to throw multiple throws at a time so this will make your uh, because we have we are very much hurry when we tie a artery so in hurry we cannot uh, just use these two uh, that two different methods at a time and for securing the knot we use to place the index finger method and then we secure it because our uh, granny is not is a slip knot because there is a loop in which around we slip the knots the shorter end uh, and the longer longer end so if i try to grab it it's easily slips away so this is how a granny's knot um, becomes a uh, very dangerous when we tie a bleeder but we we surgeons what we do is we after we tie the after we give a multiple throws around the longer end we try to secure it with the another hitch of index finger method so this will make us secure so now this is tighten and this will not be slipped away so this is how it is becomes tight now it's not easily slipping away so this is a part when we are going to make a stitch the incision area first of all we have to use our ring finger in this holder and the thumb and your index finger and the middle finger to just support it so that you can uh, be very much the movement should be very much controlled while we are stitching because we don't want to injure ourselves and also the other part of our patients so 
while we uh, just putting uh, the sutures uh, in, uh, stitching the uh, incision area i already told you the uh, the rule of x uh, the the amount of thickness of the skin and the same distance we are going to take it and we what we actually what the student do use mistake is they, they used to grab it uh, use this to give a tractional force the, the traction force will cause uh, more injury and also will be causing more difficult for you to put the suture the only concept is we have to make a circular c the circumference of this and they have to move your hand around the circumference of your the needle this circumference and you have to make a complete circle with this same your, your movement should be on the wrist side not from your shoulder not from your elbow you have to move uh, your uh, needle along the direction of your wrist just we have to make a circle so while making a circle just uh, put the uh, the tip of this in the needle perpendicularly to the skin and then make a circle and then wrap it. so this is how easily uh, i just take out or the needle and then putting or interrupt and the hand putting here a interrupted metro suture so same thing the perpendicular the very end of this skin and then easily you can take it out and this is how beautifully we place a vertical mattress suture not too tight so that don't compromise the artery the supply single throw this is how a surgeon's knot is made double throw on the first part and single throw in the next part and the tight end just and then cut it cut it away from you so that you don't injure yourself easy so this is how a stitch is made 